Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two of Cedia Expo 2021 and the next session on the Cedia Expo Smart Stage, the performance home where technology meets design. Here's the format, presentation first, and then a Q&A. You are welcome to use the microphone that's in the middle of the floor, or if you don't want to get up, you can always flag me down. I like getting my steps in during these shows, and I will glad you, gladly bring you a microphone. I'd like to introduce to you Doug Weinstein. He is editor-in-chief of Technology Designer Magazine, co-founder of the Technology Insider Group, and a 30-year veteran in consumer technology. Previously, he was the founder and executive director of the ELF Foundation Charity, which created over 90 rooms of magic entertainment theaters in children's hospitals across North America. He will take over, and he will also introduce our panel today. Take it away, Doug. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Cedia Expo 2021. Thanks for joining us at the Smart Stage. In the design build community, it can be argued that two of the trades have the most significant impact on realizing homeowner expectations, the interior designer and the technology designer. Today, we're going to talk about the intersection where technology meets design. We talk about the collaboration between these two trades, and most importantly, why both trades need to be in as early as possible in the discovery and design phases of any project. Joining me today, our panel, we have Pamela McAnally. Pam is the Vice President of the Marketplace at, uh, at the National Kitchen and Bath Association. We also have Missy Walters. Missy is the founder and principal interior designer at Studio M Interiors, based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And also Jamie Briesmeister. Jamie is the CEO and co-founder of Integration Controls, a technology design and system integration firm based in St. Louis. She is also a board member at CD Association. So let's first of all talk about what homeowners are asking for in today's performance home. So, Pam, I'll start with you. I know that NKBA has a lot of research on this. Why don't you share that with the audience? Thank you, Doug. Um, you know, what we found is that we all know that COVID has kind of changed the way we look at things and how we live. And as a result, it's also changed the relationship of consumers with their homes. So what our research has shown us is that after living in their homes for 24 seven, I think we all realize, you know what? This home is not what I wanted, nor does it suit my current lifestyle. So as a result, there are several things they're looking for in their homes now to make it easier, simpler, um, and more efficient. A couple of things that top their list, obviously smart appliances. But what does that mean? To be honest, it means connected, meaning everything should be connected through their mobile. Um, also, hands-free, voice automation. And they're looking for help when it comes to cooking, baking, and even shopping. And then we also look at centralized lighting. Everyone doesn't want to have to flip on a switch. They want it to be automated throughout the day. It cut, you can set a scene, um, and it can be automated throughout the day, so they don't have to worry about it. Same thing with whole house air, water filtration, audio systems, um, and then obviously the integration of video smart screens, particularly in the kitchen, where they want to utilize it for not only for work, education, but also for cooking, which makes it very important to make sure those screens are smudge proof. And last but not least, let me just say, hands-free everything. Everyone's now into hands-free everything. Hands-free toilets, hands-free faucets. And by the way, faucets that not only are hands-free, but also can measure and um, you know, uh, you know, do temperature the way you want it. So those are kind of the top things that, that consumers are looking for now. Perfect. Missy, uh, as an interior designer, looking at the rest of the house and also outdoor, what are you seeing in your world on what people are looking for in the modern performance home? Yeah, I think um, home automation is a really big part of it. So shades, everything can be controlled from a keypad or your smartphone, um, indoor, outdoor living. We're in Michigan, so our summer season is rather short. So I think outdoor living is really big in our area just to make sure that is it, does it sound good? Does it work the way we've got outdoor kitchens? You know, so everything needs to be integrated um, in that fashion. Right. And, and also things like uh, automated window treatments and whole house audio, I think. Pamela. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Home, uh, yeah, window shades, absolutely. 
again, touch of a button, everything comes down. Does it come up at a certain time? Does it go down at a certain time of the evening? Setting it up for sunrise, sunset, um, and ease of use. You know, a lot of our clientele are, are an older generation. It's hard to convince them that it's going to be easy. Things are going to work the way that they want them to. So making sure that you're understanding how it's going in, what's happening, how easy is it going to be? Can I do this from Florida? What's gonna What's gonna go right? What's gonna go wrong? And how do I fix it? Perfect. So, technology everywhere, basically. So Jamie is a technology designer. Why do you need it to be at the early discovery meetings? Uh, well, there's a few reasons really to be involved early, and discovery is certainly part of it. Um, a lot of our clients don't really even know what's possible. Um, you know, they, when they hear that you can turn your lights on with your, with your smartphone or that it can be automated to turn on and, you know, adjust color throughout the day, these are new, ter new terms, new thoughts, new ways of living in their home. So even just sharing what's possible is, is really the, the first part. And then in working with a designer, then setting the infrastructure to support all of the dreams, all of the wishes that the homeowner wants, whether it's during the build to come as, as a second phase or third or fourth phase, that infrastructure is so critical to get in early and believe it or not, wires still matter. So that's what we're talking about with infrastructure. It's wires, it's, it's um, backing for heavy televisions, it's um, making provisions for centralized lighting control because when you do that, you have to wire your house differently. So that infrastructure part is really important and you don't know what to do unless you discover it with your designer. Great. So I think one of the keys for these two trades to collaborate with each other is the interior design team needs to know about technology, at least at a working high level, because the homeowner doesn't know what to ask for. And uh, the design teams are brought in early. So, Pam, I know that NKBA is big as far as educating their membership. T talk to us about education, technology-wise. So, so we take it really seriously. I mean, we do have weekly webinars. Um, we do events. We sit on panels like this. Um, at our Kitchen and Bath show, which is in February, this February 8th through 10th in Orlando, um, we have a pavilion called Connected Living Pavilion where brands educate um, about their newest products and we have experts. We also have events like our design and tech event which brought together home integrators, designers, construction pros to kind of not only talk about innovation but also to help them collaborate because I think the biggest problem is that a lot of designers, and Jamie I think you'll agree, don't know any, any integrators. Um, and also they need to know them and trust them before they introduce them into the process. So I think that's one of the biggest challenges as well. So we realize that, so we try to kind of pull them all together and educate our designers. Now we all realize everybody's busy, so, but we, we at NKBA have been trying really hard to kind of do more on-demand sessions to kind of fit the schedules. I know, Missy, that you're really busy, but we're trying to fit into your busy schedule to make sure that we can do this for you. Um, so that's kind of all the, we do a lot of opportunities. Oh, and one last thing is we have a certification program. So certified kitchen and bath designer, master kitchen and bath designer. So what that means is that you're educated and you learn deep knowledge about design for kitchen and bath, which includes technology. Good. Yeah, because technology is there to enhance in, any design. Missy, as, as Pam said, I know you've got a young child at home, you're crazy busy, everybody's been crazy busy for the, for the past year, knock on wood. So in your busy life, how are you finding time to keep educated? Who's coming in and talking to you? How are you keeping up at a high level with technology? Yeah, you know, I was lucky enough to work for um, a really wonderful home builder um, starting 18 years ago who was big into some of this stuff even 18 years ago. So for me, my integrators, like luckily, I know them. Um, and I, I'm talking about that whole thing really first meeting because I understand the construction process having worked for a high-end home builder. So making sure that we're talking about those things up front, what's the rough end stuff, it's not the pretty stuff, we're gonna get to the pretty stuff later. Um, and so I love to be able to do that early on. I think for us at the studio, again, we're, we're a studio of all moms and dog moms. Um, and so 
during the day we need to be working and at night we're home getting kids to practice, getting dinner on the table, taking dog walks and sleeping. Um, so I was talking with Pam and for us it really works very well um, if they come to us. Um, we're even kind of taking on that model in our design studio. We'll come to you, to some of our busier builders and things like that. So I think finding time, you know, for our, our integrators to really come to us, do a lunch and learn, do a coffee date, do a donuts and hangout, mimosas, whatever strikes your fancy, um, that really helps us. You know, it's, it's an hour of time. We're learning something. We're educating our other designers in the studio. And it's a wonderful way for them to get a one-on-one -on -one relationship with that integrator because it really is the dream team. And, and I know you're really big in, in lighting design with, with, with your design firm. Are you getting support from the vendors, the actual manufacturers? Are they also coming and, and doing education? We do, yeah. So. You know, again, develop, for us in the studio, developing that relationship with people, those are the people that are gonna take care of you. So when I have a design problem, I'm gonna say, hey, I don't know what to do in this situation. What's the, what's the best can, you know? Okay, so that can can change color temperature actually at the housing, that's amazing. Like, how do, how do, we, how do we do that? So vendors are great, our integrators, I mean, luckily in my market, they're amazing and they're always ready to help and ready to come. So, you know, I think it's, it's, a, it's a, an amazing thing. Yeah, perfect. So Jamie, I know your background. How are you and how have you been supporting your design build colleagues in the St. Louis metro area and where you work at? Yeah, well, we started our company in 2004 and my husband looked to me, at the time I was a speech pathologist, so I had no thought I would ever be in this world. But he said, can you join my firm to um, advocate and educate the design market? We know that that's where it needs to start. So really, um, we started into 2004, and since 2005, uh, I've been beating the streets, knocking on doors, meeting the design community where they are, and uh, providing educational units for them, whether directly or uh, by bringing in a partner uh, so that we can start a relationship. And a lot of times it does start with a, a continuing education unit. Um, on some level, we as integrators need to give the design community a reason to open their door to us besides the fact that we know they need us, right? We need to provide education that actually fills their continuing education requirements in addition to ongoing support, collaborative em environments that you work together in, and then after the project's done, marketing it and celebrating what a, what a fantastic project you did together. Um, how do you do that, right? Well, one, you can join the local design communities. So as a company, uh, my company, Integration Controls, is an industry partner for ASID, which is the American Society of Interior Designers. We're also an industry partner for NKBA, National Kitchen and Bath Association. Uh, what does that mean? I'm on their newsletter list. I'm invited to all of their events. Uh, when I show up, because I've been doing this for a while, people know me. I have friends in the, in, in the industry already. A lot of times when they have new designers, they go grab new designers and say, oh, this person just graduated. You really need to know them. You, new person, you need to know Jamie and, and what their company does. Um, additionally, I've even gone to SEBA, which is a local um, Stevens uh, College is a design college in St. Louis and provided education to their members. I've had their designers come to our showroom and tour so they can see what it means when we say technology and design do go together to make your life better. Um, one final thing, and this is through Cedia itself, Cedia has a, a program that integrators can go through if you don't know about it. It's called the COI program. It's a CEDIA outreach instructor. We can be educated to then provide continuing education units that CEDIA creates. It's approved by IDCEC, so we have education units that we can provide as myself, um, which I do. I have about eight courses that I teach. Uh, and that is awesome. Um, that, that's, like I said, it's given me the ability to open the door, to have uh, something truly tangible to give to our design community. And then after is really where we shine because that, that first open door is just a beginning. 
You cannot expect a project out of that meeting. You cannot expect anything else but to hope for another meeting. And, and it's been successful. So um, educate your design community. Go out, be a COI, and um, grab your manufacturer partners. I know we've had Lutron and others do CEU events for us. It's fantastic. Super. So the homeowners are asking for technology. These trades have the biggest impact on realizing lifestyle expectations in today's modern performance home. How do we find each other? So Pam, any suggestions on how your people can find their people and, and vice versa? What advice can you, your people yes. want to meet their My people? My people, their people. Jamie, let me just say I love you. Thank you for the NKBA plug. Um, you got it. You know, we have 70 chapters in North America. And, you know, we had a few integrators stop by our booth. And my boss, sitting in the audience, Susie Wilfer, was telling them, you know what? The best way to meet, go to a chapter event. You don't even have to join the NKBA right away. But you know what? Why don't we set it up so you can go to an event, and you can talk, and you can network. I mean, that's the best way to actually meet designers. Um, and also, it kind of takes away the fear. Because I think the, the challenge that we face is this fear of not knowing what to expect, not knowing what the cost will be, um, not knowing how to handle it. So meeting them in an area where they feel comfortable is probably the number one way um, to really get to know them. And I would ask you, Missy, how did you meet your integrators? Because you said you have a couple, thank God, but how did you meet with them? Sorry, I don't mean to take over the moderation thing here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Really, my first, again, my first, you know, high-end home builder that I worked for as his interior designer had an integration company that he worked with. So um, as this was kind of developing and taking shape and, you know, lighting control, I would actually do my lighting schedule and do a lighting control schedule. So I love Excel. I am kind of the most organized interior designer that you'll ever know. Um, I love Excel. So I think for me, it was luckily the introduction by the builder. Um, in our market, you know, the builder kind of runs the project. Um, I know it's different in different states. Um, in our market, the builder sets up the team and that's your team. And so thankfully I've, I've gotten to know two amazing integrators in the Grand Rapids area and have worked with them pretty exclusively on projects and you know and ab am able to even recommend them when there is a situation that somebody doesn't have an integrator or you know a builder isn't really totally up on it so um, yeah thankfully I mean it was just really to that one introduction great so I was, I was gonna say even getting into the weeds a little bit how does the t integrator, the systems integrator, technology designer, how do we respect your busy day? H how do we contact busy design firms to open the door? Yeah, you know, for, for me right now, we've got seven of us in the design studio, and I've got one gal who manages rep meetings, who's coming in and out, what time they're coming, how many we're going to take in that month. Um, and so probably finding out whether you just do an instant message on Instagram or you send an email to the owner um, or if you can get into their contact page and send a contact um, request, ask who the right person to talk to is. In my studio right now, it's not necessarily me. I just go where people tell me to go. So somebody else kind of sets my schedule. Um, and so that, that really works the best. You know, reach out in whatever means necessary. We do get a lot of drop-ins, and that's fine too. If you just drop in with a, you know, I, we kind of joked before, it's like donuts are like the key to everything, right? So bring a box of donuts with a couple business cards. Say, I don't want to interrupt. I just want you to know me. If you're interested, I'd love to do this. And, you know, that card gets filed on the right person's desk and eventually you will get the phone call because at some point they're going to need you so Perfect. I like how you said eventually because it does take a bit of time to develop that relationship <laughs> it definitely does yeah super so Jamie in your experience what's the responsibility of the 
technology designer, the systems integrator, and what should interior designers be looking for is the type of people that it can form a long-term collaborative relationship? That's a, that's a fantastic question because I would love to say that we're all cut from the same cloth and we will all work with design and architectural communities well. But that's not necessarily true. Um, and that's not a bad thing either, uh, because there's a lot of there's a lot of trade involved in what we do. There's there's heavy lifting and wire pulling and installing, and sometimes that's done by a builder and decisions that are made in a package in a house that you buy. This is different though. Um, I would encourage designers who are looking for an integrator to start at Cedia.net. There's an integrator finder there. You can punch in your zip code, and it'll bring up people in your area. But don't stop there. That's really a starting point. Investigate the company. Uh, look at their Instagram page if they have one, a Facebook page. Look at their LinkedIn profile. Um, see what projects they've done. How do they communicate about themselves as a company? Is it design focused or product focused? Do you see a lot of technology and wires and stuff on the walls or do you see hidden, sleek, and beautiful? That will lean you one way or the other to maybe narrow your focus on your integrators so maybe you only have a few to talk to. And, and I would encourage you to have more than one. I mean, on some level, I would like to be a one-stop shop for all my designers, but at the same time, we only have so many employees. We only have so many hours in a day. We don't sell every type of product. Um, and some projects we may not want to do for whatever reason. Um, so starting at Cedia and doing more investigatory work is great. Once you have someone that you think you connect with, sit down and talk business. You know, what would it look like if we did a project together? Break out some of your plans and show your integrator. Um, after a CEU session, I do what's called a pick my brain session. I, I ask my, my designer, my architect, I say, if everything that you heard today you're interested by, can we schedule a follow up pick my brain session where you can old plans, new plans, current project, Break it out and let's just talk concepts. We'll talk concepts, we'll talk budgets, and that way if you wanna go back to that client and offer these as, as again, like what could happen, the project has already started to expand and you've really helped make that designer look like a very educated, um, holistic, complete designer instead of just one that focused purely on how it looks. Perfect, perfect. So we only have a few minutes, I wanna thank um, uh, Pam, Missy, and Jamie. Questions? I didn't think there was going to be any, so we have, we have a few minutes then. Final thoughts. Pam, final thoughts. I have one word for integrators, donuts. I hear that all the time from designers. If you're going to see them in their offices, bring donuts. Um, but seriously, what I would say, if you really want to connect with the designers and get to know them and network, go to events. Events like KBiz, um, where there are collaboration events, educational events, CEUs, like Jamie was saying, because at the end of the day, guess for most designers, they need their CEUs for education credits. So as I, I think we all here kind of agree, getting to know people in person is probably will overcome the challenges that you're going to find. Closing thoughts. Oof. Donuts. <laughs> No, I think, you know, as a, honestly, as a designer, I mean, you would think, oh, she just picks paint colors, right? Um, I am a total lighting nerd, and I love to talk lighting. I love to talk lighting control. Um, I can geek out with the best of them. So I think don't underestimate your designer um, and, and what they're interested in, what they know, um, or, or what they want to know, you know? I think... Like, like Jamie said, I mean, just making sure that you're really there to educate them. You know, confidence is instilled at the start. And if they believe in you, and then you're bringing another team member on, and then you're bringing this other team member on, they just, they start to see the pattern and they really believe in you. And that's like one, that's the main thing. Yeah, so that's part of the discovery process from the systems integrator to find out who this designer is and what their specialties are before you go walking in the door. Find out what designs you can actually enhance. Final thoughts, Jamie? 
I'm surprised about the donuts, I have to say. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm maybe just, it's just easy. No, well, I guess, and I have to, maybe I have this like bias in my mind that I should be bringing something besides donuts. I think donuts are for builders and designers need like croissants. I don't know. Well, um, that too. But maybe a croissant donut. I don't know. Um, final thought. I love that you said don't underestimate your designers. I think our community can be highly egotistical sometimes and not value the education and the mind across from us. Designers, if you don't know, like, it's not just about picking paint colors and, you know, where your furniture goes. There's a lot that goes into being in CIDQ and, and having your, being a licensed designer. So I agree with that. Definitely don't underestimate. And a lot of designers do want to know more. They're tired of hearing, oh, you don't need to know it. I know everything. All you need to know is when to bring me in, because that is not true. Uh, they want to know. They want to know a bit of technology. They might not want to know all of the details and how you code it and exactly how you punch down a wire and what you do with it. But they do want to know what is the technology. I need to know more about it. I need to know how big it is in this space. What's it going to look like? How's, how is my person going to access it? Where are you going to put it? All of those things matter. So not underestimating your designer. And then as an, as an integrator, like t keep your ego in check a bit. Um, they're educated. And a lot of times, if they're bringing you to the project, it's their job. It's not your job. So they're your boss. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed working with my people in my community, and I encourage everyone to do the same. Super. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us today. Have a great show.